So what do you like about this meal? The dosa, I think, number one thing for me, out of everything that I've eaten, the dosa was brilliant. And a good bisi bele bath is all about layers of flavor, layers of texture. What is Rocky's best food memory from Dhamma, Bengaluru? Our know. palates have changed also. They've changed. We've evolved. I mean, try, if you fed my grandmother a pizza, she would have killed you. She would be like, what is this nonsense? Correct. <laughs> so I want to be like a sponge that absorbs all tastes, all flavors. And that's why people also ask me, they say, but you go, mm, about a lot of things. So I say one thing, I don't... Because what I really wanted to do was see him take a bite of the dosa and then close his eyes and go, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think the earliest food show that I remember is you and Mayur. One of the questions that everybody has, where's Mayur? Just finished our uh, MTR breakfast. We have done well. We have done well. <laughs> yeah. We have consumed all that we could consume. There's nothing much here. And of course, the team is now doing breakfast. With help from the team. Fantastic. How's the dosa? Yeah, very nice. Very, very nice. So what do you like about shooting with Rocky? <laughs> Okay, very good. Very good. You are shooting in 15 years. Your name is So for all the visuals that you see, well, he's the man behind all that magic. Rocky, do you want to say something? Sir, I have learned, sir. <laughs> we let the team eat their meal. So what do you like about this meal? The dosa, I think, number one thing for me. Out of everything that I've eaten, the dosa was brilliant. The idli was also very good. Huh? I can't tell a lie. And rava idli I don't like, so I'm not going to comment on that. Bisi Bale Bath, again, very special. This is the sort of most non-simple Bisi Bale Bath that I've had for a long time. It's really spicy, really rich. It has a real bite, so I really enjoyed these three things for sure. And the coffee. The one thing I keep telling people is that the Bisi Bale Bath is an extremely complex dish because it looks deceptively oh, simple. Yeah. With everything in it, but there's so much. And a good bisi bele bath is all about layers of flavor, layers of texture. So when you're tasting it, so you're tasting something soft, something yeah. velvety, you'll bite into something crunchy. Somewhere in there, you'll find a bit of a vegetable. You know, it, it, I came to Bangalore first, I think in 1984, huh. uh, as a young man. Huh. And then in 91, still 92, young. I'm still a young man. <laughs> 91, 92, when I came here, uh, my friend, her mother was, her grandmother was teaching her how to make Bisi Balabad. Okay. And she was pounding the garam masala. Yeah. And I was like, you put garam masala in Bisi Balabad? That's it. She said, no. We put the masalas anyway and in the end we add garam masala on top. That's right. So that's the first time I realized what an intricate dish it is. It is. Not just a simple khichdi as a lot of people believe Not it at all. Be, Not uh, at all. Yeah. So should we answer some more questions from yes. this? Yes. Let's go. Here we go. We are open. You both look alike and share your penchant for good food. Thank you. What is Rocky's best food memory from Dhamma, Bengaluru? Karavali. Ah, Karavali. The seafood, uh, coastal food place. You know, I worked in that hotel. Oh, really? For a year. It's fantastic. Yeah. You know, there was a story. See, a lot of times people don't... Naren, Naren Timaya. Naren Timaya, before that Sriram. Okay. You know what makes the food at Karavali so special? Back in the day, there was a saying that we had for a crab to feature on the Karavali menu. The crab has to literally walk into the kitchen. It has to be alive. You know, that's the one thing that people don't realize, especially with the eateries, establishments that have been age, that are age old. There's so much of effort that goes oh, into yeah. the Completely. procurement of the ingredients. Completely. Uh, I mean, people don't know what it takes to have. If you have a thousand ingredients, which is not difficult in such a large place, including the masalas, vegetables, fruits, shoots, bark, spices, dry fruits, everything. Each one is perfect when they use it. And right. if it's not, they just don't use it. And the other thing is the people. So for example, and I get this in a lot of these legacy eateries, right? Mm. And the one thing you don't realize, so let's say when you have an eatery that's been around for like 50, 60 years, you've got staff too that have been around for that long. Yes. So they are much more senior. So therefore, that experience contributes to the dish. And you also have to compensate them well. Yeah. So that cost ultimately finds its way into the cost of the dosa. 
So yeah. that's the reason why that dosa probably costs thirty percent more than the eatery down the road that is just opened. No, but, but also that cost makes sure that the dosa you eat is thirty percent better than all the other dosa that you have. Absolutely. Because it's you know if you're going to be big in the world, this is one thing that I believe. You have to stand on the shoulders of giants. You can never become a giant yourself. And there are the people who've been here for thirty, forty years, possibly know more about food than most people running their own restaurants. They're just happy to be here serving. So I think that is that wealth is you can never take that away. So I have a question, and of course we look at that question. Ah. A lot of times people, and I and I get this a lot of times when I'm doing eateries that have legacy. It's not like before. Munche tara illa. Do you get that too? Yeah. And, and I think it's justified to a point. There was a time when you would get, let's say, the Bedagi Masankai chili that would come fresh from the north, make its way into Bengaluru, be dried along the lake beds on the flat sand, along the back flat uh, rock surfaces. It would have a completely different, you know, the water would come up and moisten it, the sun would dry it, become crispy, become, you know, that crunchy black color. Nobody does that anymore. Now you're putting it in a commercial dryer, you're shipping it abroad for makeup requirements, for lipstick and nail polish, and you're using another chili for the food. Will the taste be different? Yes, it will be. And also, the, I mean, our geography has changed. Yeah. Let's say you take something like dood. Mm. Butter that comes out of it, paneer yeah. that comes out of it, tuppa that comes out of it. Unka chara yeah. badal gaya hai. Yeah, yeah. You know, what they're feeding on is different. So how will that run? So the milk is going to be different. So the coffee that you sip on now, much as they will try yeah, to be source the best possible bean, etc., there will be that difference from what you tasted yeah. 30 years ago. No, it's, it's horrible. You know, I, I, I hate to mention this, but I'm going to say it. People can realize there are places in Rajasthan where all the carcasses are left out for the wild animals to eat. They're gathered in open fields, large open fields. If you ever go to the fields, you'll see big piles of plastic, like mountains of plastic. And when you ask where they've come from, those are the leftovers of cow stomachs. So cow stomachs are full of plastic. Where will you get the kind of milk that you wanted, you know? Even us, with the insecticides and the pesticides and the plastics we're consuming and the air we're breathing. So everything is different, I think. Badal gaya is very true, but you've changed too. Yes, I mean, you our know, palates have changed also. They've changed. We've evolved. I mean, try if you'd fed my grandmother a pizza, she would have killed you. She would be like, what is this nonsense? Correct. <laughs> so therefore, they also say you should always eat food that your grandparents recognize, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, because that's healthy, seasonal, regional, coming off the land that it's best suited for, ah. and into you, and you're best suited to live in that land. So, Correct. You know, but I think those are the changes and in a moving world you accept those and yes. you say let's make the best of what we have because I keep telling people, people keep saying oh this happened in the past, that happened in the past and this happened and therefore we should do this. You can't change the past. You can say whatever you want it will still remain what it was. Only change the future. Correct. So I think looking forward is the most critical thing for food and for people. For people in general. So, so two questions from Twitter before we let you go. You are both like two sides of the same coin. Only question which is the best vegetarian food Rocky has ever had in his career. Oh. <laughs> That's a good one. Kesar the Daba in Amritsar in Punjab. Ah. Absolute best. With the ghee ka chok. Oh my god. Ah. You went there. You yeah. went there. And uh, one unknown little place outside the Gir forest in Gujarat that made this ragi, ro ragi rotis. Ragi roti. So they make a rotla, they call it. Rotla, yeah. ah, rotlo. They make a rotlo ah. and they'll put white butter on it, base up and put that wet gur that they have. In the rainy season in Gujarat, the gur is liquid. And they'll pour that over and oh my god, oh. even that. So good. But of course, the vegetables coming fresh. The guy had a dhaba at the edge of his field. So he literally went and picked up a gobi. And he cooked it right there and everything was super fresh. So. Fantastic. So there you go, two of his best vegetarian meals. Well, what about you, your best vegetarian? You know, I have a concept here. To me, I don't have a best meal. Whatever I'm eating at that point is my best. Because that's all the attention. I want to give that dish all the attention that it deserves. True. And the other thing that I have a belief, and I may be wrong, I feel that when you say this is my best, you always tend to at some point compare whatever compare, you're experiencing yes. with that. Yes. I want to be like an open book, right? So I want to be like a sponge that absorbs all tastes, all flavors. And that's why people also ask me, they say, but you go mm, about a lot of things. So I say one thing, I don't, I speak for the food as it speaks to me. And every dish has a personality, has a character. 
you may like a particular dosa somewhere you may not like it elsewhere but that's no fault of the dosa is the dosa burnt is the is the alu palya kacha is the potato hard that is a technical issue but the crispiness of the dosa or the dark roast of the dosa or somewhere else it's laden in all that butter that's the character of that dosa yeah, yeah. i only project that i only showcase that and i give it voice it's up to the viewer to decide whether that's a dosa for them no it's uh, and it's very true you know i was in nagaland when somebody said how will you tell us what is the best naga food that you've eaten and i said i can't yeah how do you because the what is good food for you is a result of what you've grown up eating absolutely what is your familiarity with that food how deeply you connect to it culturally and through your experiences and if you have no cultural or experiential connect you might as well be commenting on you know japanese food comparing it to indian food there is no comparison that's right it's two very different things that's right if you're japanese and you're made to eat a nice dosa here you'll be like what is this so i don't think you're right food is not good or bad but i just think what is familiar acceptable understanding on your palate something that you felt and tasted before generally you tend to like that more that's right and for me to stretch my palate is taken i say it took 10 years for me to be able to eat everything and respect it that's right not enjoy it i still don't enjoy a lot of the foods that i eat but respect it and you know a lot of this so for example you talk about food that you that you probably takes you back and i think a lot of the flavors that we like are comfort flavors yeah so those are flavors that Always. probably remind you of a happier time etc but i think the the greatest joy to be derived is yes whilst you have that comfort aside is to embrace newer things yeah and see what it's what it's about you can then decide whether you want to like it or not whether yeah. you want to have it the next time or not but try it it's like meeting a person right i'm meeting you for the first time today and i'm discovering you right yeah. now if i come in and saying this is how i expect rocky to be i will miss the real rocky go away and yeah you never know what happens that's right i will go away yeah well what is that you know people say like familiar familiarity and comfort as if people keep saying you're a real sucker for punishment i'll say yeah my mother used to beat me so it times i get knocked around by life i'm like hey, i'm so comfortable here yeah. just like growing up you know and that's the getting but uh, but yeah i think i think the ability to enjoy everything and experience everything and respect everything because when it's food it's somebody's food somebody's cooked it with a lot of love somebody's eaten it all their life to take a bite and be like uh, this is horrible i can't eat this. that is just obnoxious it's rude it's unsophisticated it is unforgivable it is a small mentality i think as a as a food blogger or as a food writer or as a foodie if you take a bite of some food you must discover what is different about it what appeals to you what doesn't appeal to you fair enough fair game but you can't trash people's food no matter what it is point well said and a point to be taken as well i think we've taken a lot of your time rocky thank you very much thank you Sir, for inviting me on your show no thank you for coming and being so generous with your time can i give you a hug sitting down absolutely i'm going to stand and uh, <laughs> you got to catch this episode I'll oh, catch it now in 2 hours it'll be up by 2 o'clock. Well this this is going to be long after that. So oh, I suppose is... you've caught it already but if you haven't I'm going to place links in the description below. Do check out Road Tripping with Rocky and History TV 18. History TV 18 season 4. Season 4. Yeah. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV Do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating.